Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Now, I've received a few comments from some subscribers saying they cannot believe how much crap I buy, how much tat and cheap cars. And to be fair, you know, they've got a point. I do like to buy a cheap shitter, but that doesn't really represent the entirety of Bear Motors or all the cars that I stock. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna to link to a video here that I did the other day for the Bear Motors channel, where I kind of walked around of what the current stock was, which to be honest has completely changed again because the guys are on a stormer this month selling stuff uh, i think we're at about 26 for the month on about 24 sales so excellent um yeah so it changed all the time but there was a mix but let's face it the cheap cars are the ones that i tend to be more interested in they got more interesting things to find out about them it's more interesting figuring out whether they're actually going to still run okay or not and they're the ones that seem to get the more views so speaking of that Let's look at the crap we've bought today. And here it is. This is my new 2009 Cadillac BLS Saab 93. Sorry, no, not Saab 93. Well, it is a Saab 93, but it's not. It's a Cadillac. Isn't this a weird car? I saw this going through the auctions at BCA, of course. I think it was my local one, so Bridgewater. I saw Cadillac. I saw a guide price of a thousand pounds, and I thought, ah, oh, I'm gonna end up buying this, aren't I? And I have. But what drew me to it most was seeing, oh, it's a Cadillac. It's probably some crap American car that didn't wasn't very popular over here. Um, and it would just be kind of funny, but we'll find someone who wants it because it's American and, you know, American cars do have a bit of a following. But then you look inside, when I was looking at the pictures for this thing, and look, undeniably, this is just a Saab 93. Uh, the gauges, the steering wheel, the gear stick, and obviously the alloy wheels. Just look at the general shape of it. This quite clearly, is a dentist jet in disguise as an American car. But I don't hate it for it, to be honest. There's a lot to be said for a Saab 9.3. Practical, reliable, highly economical. And now this one's got a few American touches on it. How cool is that badge? I'd just quite like to take that off and, I don't know, stick it somewhere on my toolbox that I don't use or something. But... <laughs> It is funny, isn't it? Because it is 100% just a Saab. Anyway, that said, hopefully I can get over the fact that it's a Saab with a Cadillac badge on it. It's not the end of the world. People do these things in the car world. They rebrand something else as a slightly different model. Why, I don't know, because they're never very popular. But there we have it. Let's have a talk about this specific one and figure out what we're going to do with it. So, on the whole, it's not too bad condition. We've got a bit of a scuff here on the front arch. Alloy wheel does have some curbing, but it's not too bad. It would benefit from a good clean. This back driver's door is a bit of a shame. Don't know how well it will show up on camera, but there are quite a few little dings. And I could get a dent man out to sort that out. Probably cost me about 50 quid, I think, to do the majority of the little dents in this, but whether it be worth it or not, I don't know. That's what we're going to try and ponder on today. This wheel, again, looks okay to be fair. It's just going to benefit from a good clean-up, a bit of tyre shine. Tyre looks in pretty good condition. We've got a land sale. Excellent. I was thinking that it could do with new uh, centre cats for this, but I bet you they won't be easy to find, being a Saab wheel but a Cadillac design. Okay, there's a couple of scratches along the bodywork here. How well you'll see that on black, I don't know. I can just about catch it with my nail, but we could definitely make that look 90% better just with the polishing. Around the back, definitely want some plates because these are just looking worn out. We can get some nice fresh ones on there. It really lifts the car, makes it look better, even though they are dealer plates. They're just, the backing material on there is worn out. It just looks rubbish. You'd be surprised how much nicer it makes a car with some nice fresh plates on it. So, a few chips, scratches, things like that. Bits that would touch up. Not the end of the world. 
This side, though, I will say, I don't know how well it will show up, but it is so dull, this side, and all the faint lines and scratches that are going along here. I think this car must have been parked in a bush or just driven through bushes, going through lanes all the time, because they are all just horizontal along the car. I'm fairly certain you'll be able to see that quite well. Um, so this side of the car looks really dull, but it's just this side, not the other side, so it's a bit weird. Bit of a more scuff along there. Again, this alloy wheel looks pretty good, and the land cell on there with good tread. Starting to look like it might start perishing soon, but looks okay at the moment. Then this alloy wheel, usually the worst one. Actually not bad at all. Lots of nice tread on there. This is a Seata Touring 2 tyre. Um, yeah, would definitely benefit from a polish up. Would definitely benefit from a bit of a polish on the headlights. Number plates, shame about the front badge because I bet you they're not easy to find. Just got some moisture in behind there and looking a bit crappy. But on the whole, we've got a, we've got a sunroof as well, along with some growths on it that look like it should be uh, from out of The Last of Us, the fungus. It's not too bad though, is it, for what I paid for this car, which was 600 pounds plus fees, about 817 pounds bargain. So our key should look fairly familiar to anyone who's ever driven a Saab before. It has got a little Cadillac badge on the back, but other than that, you will recognise it for this, what looks like a log splitting wedge to me. It's a weird shaped key, isn't it? But this is what you get on pretty much every Saab 93 I've ever driven. We've got a remote central locking, but it doesn't seem to want to lock, just unlock. And we have, I think, power folding mirrors. Whether they open when we open the door, I'm not sure. Perhaps when we start it. It's pretty grubby in here. Quite a lot of tobacco. I particularly like the stickers over the whole wear mark in the carpet. We've got electrically controlled seats, which is nice with memory as well, but my God, would it be nice to get in there and clean all that crud out. Fair bit of wear on the seat. But not too bad on the whole. I can't get over this Saab steering wheel with the Cadillac badge in the middle. Bizarre. Um, you recognise the three sort of uh, gauges on here from most Saabs. I wonder if there's a night panel button on here, same as there is on all the Saabs, where you can just turn off all the lighting other than just for the speedo to minimise glare when you're driving on things. It's quite a nice feature, that, on Saabs. But I don't know if they'll have it on here. Looks like we've got heated seats. We've got this navigation system, which is quite cool actually. When you start it up, you get the Cadillac badge. Six speed manual, a couple of cup holders, and quite a nice location. Center armrest with more tobacco. I've got the uh, Top Don JS3000 on the passenger seat here. Seriously good bit of kit that because it was a bit sluggish to start. I think the battery is okay. It just hasn't really been driven much recently. So this car is on 129,547 miles, which isn't really a lot for one of these uh, in a 1.9 turbo diesel. They're pretty good. I've had these on much higher mileage. Interestingly, despite the key being 100% Saab, the key does not go in the center console here like it normally would on a Saab 93. It's actually in your kind of generic key slot over here. I don't know why that is, but Oh, a bit sluggish. Will it go or will we have to get the top don on there? Either way, let's keep the ignition on. Check out the Cadillac graphic that comes up. We'll turn the ignition off for now while we kind of look around the rest of the car. Then we'll get the, the top don on there and get this thing fired up. But yeah, it's not in bad condition in here. What have we got in our pop-out glove box? Looks like we got some paperwork. The original folder. Look at that, Cadillac BLS. Locking wheel nuts. Um, bits and pieces in here, which we'll try not show, because I think it's got people's names on it. Interesting to go through that at some stage, because it looks like 
Oh, is that probably just going to be our old MOT test? The car has got service history. I think nine service stamps, and it was last serviced a couple of years ago in 2020. So, realistically, it wants a service. It was marked down on its report for this car. In fact, let's have a look. As having a smoking engine, but I can't say that I've noticed that, actually. It's got a little bit of a diesel -y smell. It's kind of smoky, acrid, diesel -y smell. Not surprising, really. It's a diesel car on higher mileage. We might put a little treatment in here to clear it out, but we've had this from cold start, revving it up, um, and don't seem to see any issues on there. Seem to get that quite a lot. And I think a lot of diesel cars, when they end up at auctions, they may end up sat around at the auctions for a good few weeks before they actually go through, or they've been sat at the dealership waiting to get collected by the auction house to be taken in. And cars that don't get used very much, especially diesels, tend to end up being a bit smoky, I think. Nine times out of ten, we used to, especially back in the day when I used to buy the real cheap cars, well, like this really, uh, every day, day in, day out, you'd leave the MOT, uh, not the MOT centre, sorry, you'd leave, leave the auction centre, put your foot down, you'd like leave a cloud of black smoke, but it would clear up by the time you got there and you'd never see that again. I think that's just a, a case of sitting around or like lots of little starts um, and not really driving the car anywhere. So fingers crossed that's what it is, but we will get this out on the road and we'll find out you know there could be a turbo issue when you actually try and get some boost out of it but so far i think it seemed okay the other thing this report made note of us was that the mirrors were not adjusting i can hear something oh it is moving so it'll go up it won't come back down again it won't go left it won't go right Left hand one, it is moving left, it is not moving right, it's moving up, it's moving down, it's moving not left again now. So, yeah, they are working, but not properly, and that's probably why they've been marked on the report. So, sometimes you'll buy a car that has a report and it says it's okay, and you end up finding it's got problems. Sometimes you'll buy a car with a report that says it's got problems and really they're not that bad uh hopefully this is a case where they're on the report and they're not that bad i can live with that this car at this price range 800 quid the fact that the electric adjustment wingers don't work perfectly perhaps one of the guys in the workshop might spend 10 minutes and find out that a cog slipped or something so we might get that back up and running again the back looks in reasonable condition just oh man lots of crud to clean out I think this has probably been given a quick hoover around either by the dealership or the auction house. The auction houses will do, you know, like valeting services, but you know, they're not that thorough. Usually what they are thorough at doing, if you get a uh, auction from BCA is the valeters will pull the bottoms, the bases of the back seats out. And quite often cars will turn up and these bases will just be kind of half hanging off like this because they've been in there trying to get all the change that might have fallen down there, but doesn't seem to be the case in this one. Maybe they just thought it was too grubby and they weren't going to bother, but look at the dust in here. So, yeah, it would definitely want a good valet to be in its best shape. Huge boot, as you'd expect, being a Cadillac Saab 9.3 BLS. We've still got our parcel shelf, which has been chewed by a dog. Some mats that are not worth saving by the looks of it. We've got a false floor with our jack kit, etc. there. Our Bose subwoofer, some cargo nets. I wonder what's in. Can I get that to stay up? Okay, we've got bin bag and our tire foam kit in there. Nothing in that chewed up panel. Anything in this chewed up panel? No, just more leaves and twigs and things, which kind of leads me more to think again. That stuff in there combined with a completely flat and scratch paint on this side, this has probably been someone's country, you know, gardening car or tip run car. You know, the type of people, the type of people like my parents who had the same car for the last 15 years and will not replace it until you know it will not move off the driveway but they were just 
they had to, they'd fill the back of the car up with rubble or dirt or whatever, just to take it down to the tip because it's just a car and who cares? Ooh, it actually looks a bit grim under here. Got the rust on, on the coolant pipes by the looks of it. That doesn't look very attractive. A bit of rust on the top of the struts there. That one's had a replacement at some point. Just dirty. Even need to think again. Not being hugely cared for. Nothing too bad looking there. Let's check the dipstick. Okay. Oil looks black, as you'd expect from a diesel, but not bad. Coolant's not too hot. Don't ever want to open one of these when it's piping hot. Okay, super nice, fresh looking coolant in there. It looked very full, but it was just a bubble. Yeah, happy with that. Even though it has got the longest, tightest thread in the world. So, could definitely benefit from a good clean under here. It'd be interesting to see what kind of condition that air filter's in. But on the whole, for the age and everything, it doesn't look too bad. It's just not that visually appealing, is it? So let's get our top done out here on our Halfords battery. Let's get it out on the road. Have to give a huge shout out to Top Don who have been supporting the channel for longer than any other supporter, to be honest. Uh, they've sent me out a couple of different jump packs. I already had the JS1200, which is a great bit of kit. I just carry that around in my backpack all the time now. If you ever get a car that needs a little boost or my laptop's running out of battery or my phone is, I can charge things off of that and it will start pretty much any car. They've now sent me out the JS3000 to compare, which I think I'm going to struggle to do because the JS1200 will start pretty much anything that we've got, even up to say the 3.7 V8 petrol Audi A8 over there, it will start it up no problem. So this gives us even more capacity, but I guess it would keep my phone charged for longer. But considering how small and neat of a package this is, it is absolutely incredible. And you've got your torch and everything on there. This one even comes with a bracket on the back, so you can either hang it up or stand it on the side of the road have it sat down there shiny on a wheel if you were changing one of those late at night. This is absolutely for 150, 160 quid. Just such a central bit of kit to have in your car, I think. So we've hooked up our terminals. You can see that this battery has got enough power to make a connection anyway. We've got our indicator light here. If it isn't, then the battery is completely flat, which has been the case of a lot of uh, cars that I've used this on. You just need to hold that button down until it puts it into kind of forced power mode. And then, this thing will fire up. An absolute treat. Well, there's quite an annoying rattle vibration from, I assume, what is the parcel shelf. So build quality feels very American. But other than that, this couldn't feel less American to drive. It is very typically Saab. It's pretty nippy. It's quite nimble. It's comfortable and it doesn't feel really heavy. Well, it seems to go quite well. I don't think it feels much different than you would expect a Saab 9.3 1.9 TID to drive. Suspension feels good, and that can be quite a down point on these. Mm, I feel like I almost had a bit of a suspension noise then, but lower arms and bushes on these can be a bit of a pain. And, you know, seven times out of 10, you buy one of these or a Saab in general, the suspension bushings are worn out and it's clonking around all over the place so it's reassuring to know that this one actually feels pretty tight and okay and hopefully i won't have to spend any money there so we did definitely have a bit of smoke going on as we we're driving along mainly on the overrun once you'd let off the throttle what that would indicate i don't know but it seems to drive well we're not hearing any weird turbo whistling it still seems to pull okay. I feel like maybe it could pull a little bit better, so perhaps the exhaust DPF is clogged a little bit and it would benefit from a little fuel treatment, which I think I would do on this anyway, especially when we do the service. But I gotta say, I don't really have any initial concerns at all. 
brakes are good and it brakes in a straight line. Not bad at all so far. That rattling in the back is driving me mad though. I really hope you can pick up on that. Sounds like a bit of static from a TV or something. Just it's lucky I'm such a patient, laid back guy. The radio actually seems pretty decent quality. I cannot get the satellite navigation to work at all. I do have a satellite navigation disc here, but it just says disc error, so I can't get that to work at the moment. I might have another disc in the paperwork back at the office, but I forgot to check before I came out. On the whole, it seems like a pretty honest, straight car, to be honest. It's, it's not the best car in the world. It's not low mileage or whatever, but for what it is, it's, you know, it's genuine, it's honest. It seems to drive okay. It doesn't sound like it's rattling itself to pieces. I feel safe in it. I feel like it's been maintained well enough that it's, you know, safe and gonna be as reliable as a Cadillac Saab is. So the dilemma is, as this is gonna be a, a farm car to go down my storage site for Sophie to sell, do we just send it down there uh, and try and double our money, get 1,600 quid for it, maybe 1,500 quid? Not forgetting I do wanna do a service on this and spend a bit of time cleaning it. Uh, so maybe looking at a, you know, five, 600 quid profit, um, just try and get it done quickly. It's a, it's an estate car. It's basically a Saab. They're usually pretty popular. They're great workhorses. And it's got a good bit of MOT on it. I think it has got the best part of eight months, maybe, off the top of my head. So we could do that. Or my other option is to get Jordan to polish this, sort out the dull one side of it, give it a good valet, sort out the headlights, make it look its best, do the service, and try and get some stronger money for it. I think probably realistically, the best we're gonna get is maybe a couple of thousand. If I look at the cap retail price for this, it does say 2,500, but there's not an awful lot of them about to compare. In fact, the only one that I could find a Cadillac BLS, which this is, was a saloon version and it was the 2.6 V6 petrol or whatever it is. And that was for about 4,000, 4,500, something along those lines. So I don't know whether to just give this a quick rinse, wash, change the fluids and send it on as it is, or whether it's worth cleaning it up and seeing how nice it could come out to try and get that little extra profit. I don't know, but the next time you see me, I will have decided and I will have an answer for you. So I'll see you then. So you guessed it. Yes, we are going to polish it, clean it up and make it look 10 times better. I'm probably not gonna be able to show you that finished article in this video because Jordan is still working on it, but hopefully you'll be able to see how shiny this side is looking now. What have you done to it, Jordan? Uh, a mixture of like 3,000 wet and dry for the majority of the side of the car. Um, the bonnet is just a hard cut. Um, obviously that side was the worst of it, hence why I've wet sand. So you've actually taken sandpaper to it first before? On a DA. Not and then, I don't know how well it would show up on the bonnet here, but kind of first pass one side to the other. This side hasn't been done yet. So this was the better of the two sides but you can see all the scratches still got this side the back these two big scratches to do headlights how long should it take to do the headlights uh well not headlights sorry the rest of it i know the headlights probably take yeah what, an hour the headlights or are going to be like a fraction of the rest of the bodywork but look how shiny it is now this side was like matte before yeah i kind of regret it's saying, still yeah, there's but... still uh still some in it obviously it's never gonna be perfect uh not about a lot of work right but it's gonna look a lot better and you regret saying it now yeah you'll do it i regret saying i'll do it it's black black is the worst color to polish it's the worst color to own in my opinion it's nice it's nice when it's done and if you got the money to have maintenance washes every week 
Well, there you have it. So it is going to be super shiny. I'm not going to show you in this video. I'm going to wrap it up here because it's the beginning of the bank holiday weekend. Seems like it's bank holidays all the time. Um, but if you don't already follow me on Instagram, follow me shifting underscore metal. And when it's all done in a few days time or a week's time. Uh, next month. Next month. Uh, it will be on there. So make sure you follow the Instagram page. You'll see it on there. And other than that, I will see you next time.